WTF Game Nation. This is Peanut Butter. And this is Toaster Butter. Coming to you from Game Nation Studios with a comprehensive breakdown on how we achieved the Whisper of the Worm, Destiny 2's version of the Black Spindle with the OG White Nail Perk. To start with, we're going to explain how to get into the secret mission. The Whisper mission is an exclusive event. It starts every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and leaves Monday at 10 a.m. as well. If week one is any indication, you have to enter this in the Lost Oasis section on IO. You'll wait for a Taken Blight public event to spawn. It must be this event at this location. As soon as the event starts, there will be a Taken Champion that will spawn, either in the cave on top of the side of the hill, in the canyon down below in the middle, or under the tree in the back. As soon as you kill the champion, a portal will spawn that will take you into what is arguably the best mission in Destiny 2 thus far. You will start within a lost sector, and you have 20 minutes to complete the mission, which consists of an in-depth jumping puzzle, three rooms of ad control, and three bosses. You will need to kill all three bosses to claim your whisper. You can skip the majority of the lost sector by jumping on a rock, and then up to where the chest will be. Past the chest and the wall on the left is a hidden cave. And in this cave, you will find a blight. Shoot the blight, and a hole will appear in the ground, your entrance into the jumping puzzle. You are looking for the red pathways at this point. Hug the wall to your right side. Avoid the pistons that fly out of the wall. Drop down, still hugging the right wall, and follow the red path as it branches out to the left. Jump to that isolated red platform out there, and then forward to the next ledge. Here you will jump around the left corner and crouch, walking in between the cinder blocks that will push you forward. If you spam the jump button, you can actually skip a few of these cinder block locations. The cinder blocks will spawn in the darker colored area of the ground. At the very end of this pathway, jump across the chasm to the ledge on the left. Ride the block that serves as an elevator upwards, then take your first left. The next hallway can be totally disorienting, but try to stay on the ledge, and if you get bumped off, jump backwards toward the right. In the next couple of rooms, try to always be moving forwards. The next room will alternate between ledges on the left and right, and taken blights that will attempt to force push you off the ledges. Wait for the first pulse to go off. That should put you on a rotation that you'll miss every single push. At the very end, there's a tiny hole in the wall. After passing through this hole, you will find yourself in the room with many different portals. Every one of these portals will kill you, except the right one, which is located on the top right corner. Head there. This next room is probably the most difficult part of the jumping puzzle. Fortunately, you have the option to take a shortcut. As soon as you enter the room, you walk down the ramp, you look to the right, you crouch. You'll go into a little dark hallway going toward the other door into the next section. In case you don't want to take the shortcut and you want to challenge yourself to go ahead to head with this jumping puzzle, move toward the left side of the room. You always want to look for the green mossy ledges. Those are the only ones that you're going to be able to stick to going clockwise throughout this room until you get to the opposite end of the room where you drop down in the middle section and land on a ledge to walk through this jumping puzzle. On to the next. It's very important to remember that there are nearly endless amounts of loadouts to use, and the best ones will always be whatever you are most comfortable with. For our loadouts, we recommend having a void energy weapon and a solar power weapon, or vice versa, as the vast majority of these enemies are either void or solar shielded. For power weapons, having snipers is very beneficial, especially for the bosses, but shotguns such as the Perfect Paradox, the Ikela Shoddy, Hawthorns, or the Zenith will work as well. Sleeper is also a very common option. Once you receive the Whisper of the Worm Sniper, it will be your best friend for future runs, helping your friends, and in the heroic version of the mission. For subclasses, you will want to use a Titan with the Sunbreaker Top Tree subclass. Make sure you have the Syntheseps equipped. 
for a hunter, you will want to use an arc strider with the radon flux top tree on that subclass as well. And for the warlock, I recommend either the storm trance with the crown of tempests or dawn blade. Those will work well for ad control. There are now only a few rooms left in the puzzle, and they are a straightforward path. Follow the path in front of you in the next few rooms. After turning a few more corners, you'll be in the first room of enemies, ready to fight. As always, team shotting as much as possible will always make for smoother runs. The enemies in the next few rooms will all be very high level. They will kill you. They will kill you fast. So play defensively and smart. We always try to take the snipers out first, followed by the captains, then the wizards, and so on. All the other enemies will be there. You can take them all out as soon as you get those main characters down. Make sure you're constantly using the right element to match the shield you're breaking. This room will have a sniper in the top right and top left corners, as well as a captain on the left and right side. After the snipers and captains are down, one person should pop a super in this room. Focus on the goblins and vandals. First with that super, and then roll together as a team to clear whatever ads are left. At the end of each room, a blight will appear that will be blocking the door. You shoot that blight to move forward into the next room. The next room is an in-between room and is filled with captains and vandals. It's very tight and there's not a lot of space. These guys will melee you and smash you. The best way through this room is for a second player to pop their super to clear the room. The sooner you can clear this room, the better. As for everyone else, while the super is clearing the rest of the room, never be fearful of using your abilities. Shields, pop, whatever you can, melee, grenades, everything is on the table. Kill these guys, they will smash you if you're not careful and they will delay your progress into the next room. We are now in the second main room of ads. Send the third fire team member with a super to clear the close right side while a teammate with a sniper will stay in the back and focus on clearing the night on the close left balcony. This balcony is also a great place to clear the hobgoblin snipers in the back of the room and to get another angle to shoot the wizards. The wizards like to hide from you as soon as you break their shield so having multiple angles to shoot them will serve to kill them quicker. As before, clear the snipers first then start to clear the wizards and knights, followed by the acolytes on the ground. Call to your teammates when shooting a tankier enemy so that you can focus on that enemy with your team. There are also many yellow bar enemies in this room, so do not be afraid to use any of your power ammo as you have plenty of extra bricks that will spawn. There are many different blights in a lot of these rooms. You do not need to take most of them out. Only take out the ones that are in your way or blocking you from getting another enemy. You may notice that we're using the Whisper of the Worm in this video. This was actually recorded after we got the gun, but it is not necessary to do this. There are many different guns that you can use. On my first completion, I used the Darcy. The Ikelos Sniper from Escalation Protocol is also a really good sniper to use at that point. If you're on PlayStation, the Borealis will be very beneficial especially with the ability to be able to change your element. The next in-between room has three snipers towards the left-hand side. Clear them as soon as you open the blight door, but know that there will also be two Cabal Phalanxes that will spawn right behind you and try to kill you. Clear as many snipers as you can before they spawn, turn around and throw a grenade to take them out. If one person stays slightly back, they can focus on the Cabals as much as possible while the other teammates focus on the snipers. Clear the last few Scions on the ground, and if you have Masterwork weapons, you can use them to farm some extra orbs. Then your way forward will be open. You are now in the final room. Once you clear all three bosses, you will be able to collect your Whisper. First thing in this room is to clear blights. Start with the close right blight, as well as the blight in the middle of the room towards the back. You want to take the blights out because the bosses will try to hide in them, and while the bosses are in the blights, they will be immune. Taking the blights out will give you a straight shot to the head of the bosses. There will be a few centurions in this room with arc shields. 
someone should pop a super, preferably somebody with an arc super, such as an arc strider or a storm trance. If you don't have any arc supers, go ahead and feel free to switch your energy weapon to an arc weapon, just for this portion of the fight. As soon as all the enemies are clear, your first boss will spawn. If available, use a melting point, and the other two teammates should be able to pop their supers on that first boss. When the supers are out, back up towards the entrance of the room, and this is where a sniper comes in handy. You can hit every boss from this angle. If someone does not have a sniper, they should focus on ad control, as well as taking down the Axion bolts flying towards the teammates so that the snipers have a clear line of sight on the boss. The cave on the right hand side of the room is relatively safe, as well as the cave on the left. After the first boss goes down, Move towards the left, focusing on the second boss, the Cabal. The Cabal boss likes to hide behind that pillar in the middle, but if you have one sniper looking towards the left side of the pillar, and one looking towards the right, you can take turns shooting him as he strafes back and forth. move further towards the left after he is dead to focus on the final boss in the room. You can either take him down from this hill where you're sniping, or you can go into that left cave. Going into the left cave keeps you safe from the majority of the adds, but you will have to deal a little bit more with his fire. As long as you're aware of where that fire is, you will be safe in that area and you have a straight shot to his head. If you take out the close blight on the left, that also serves to be a lot easier for taking down that final boss. By the time you get to the final boss, usually everybody has their super back at this point. As you move over to the left hand side, we can put another melting point on the final boss and everybody can pop their supers on him again. This will usually take him down the vast majority of the way and then you can shoot him with your sniper or whatever ammo you have left over at that point to finish him off. These strats worked extremely well for us. They also translate well into the heroic version of this mission. Now, if you already started with the heroic version, you already are very well aware. The Whisper is amazing on bosses. If you just picked up the gun, buckle up for safety because you got a new attitude, man. You're going to take this gun on your heroic mission and you're going to smash these bosses because now you've got the best sniper in the game. Hey, if these strats work for you, man, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for hanging out with us for this journey through the Black Spindle mission, a.k.a. the Whisper of the Worm. Enjoy it, man. It only comes around once in a lifetime. Or every weekend.